Hi everyone, I'm Fanola Howard here uh, from How Great Marketing Works again. <laughs> so I want to introduce you to another expert on our panel of experts because we like to bring you this great mix of all the types of people that you will need to help you grow your business at the appropriate time in your business. And today I want to introduce you to Grant Perry, who has like me also with this in common, 25 plus years in marketing. He's got 16 plus years in digital marketing. So he has seen it grow from this small idea with limited tools and techniques growing right to where it is now. And he has worked with clients and lots of publications throughout the years on everything from onboarding customers to brand to uh, so much more. And I want him to tell you all about it himself. So. Welcome, Grant, to How Great Marketing Works. I'm so delighted you're on the panel. You have such uh, value to bring to everybody, so we're delighted to have you. Thank you. Yeah, likewise, I'm, I'm delighted to be here. Thanks for, for taking the time. I'm, I'm looking forward to, to getting sure. to work with some of you, you know, some of the people that you get to work with. It's exciting. Yeah, no, really exciting, and they're great people on the program, so it's fantastic. Yep. But let's first kind of focus on you, you know? We want to know about you. <laughs> So tell well, us a little bit about you. Yeah, I guess if you haven't figured out already, I think you well, you know, but if anyone else hasn't, I'm, I'm uh, not originally from Ireland. Uh, I'm from New Zealand. The accent is probably a little away. bit mixed now. Um, but no, I was born and, and educated in New Zealand. And as you mentioned, you know, a lot longer ago than I would like to care to remember sometimes. But certainly in the pre-internet age, um, you know, I, I learned the fundamental principles of marketing, which I think I'd like to think helps me today as well because I was very eager to embrace digital marketing and I, and I love digital marketing but I think having that foundation prior to the internet actually in some ways um, you know has helped me kind of navigate those those two different fields and realize that they're really not different at all that they're, that they're yeah. one and the same in many ways so um, I'd like to just add yeah. this piece because it's one of the reasons that I wanted Grant to be part of this panel and it's why I chose specific people on this panel it's this connected view of marketing, connected view of business, so that you're not seeing someone who's just going to concentrate on this silo of their expertise or their niche. They're going to give you more than what their, you know, where how I've categorized people in the panel, you will get more than what we have put limits on there. There are no limits. These yeah. people can help you across so many areas because they have a connected view and Grant is absolutely one of those. Yeah, I hope so. I mean, I think that is, um, I'd like to think that's a, a sort of a skill that's come through that experience really. So I, I look, I left, you know, did a, a marketing business degree at university and then worked for a couple of large corporate style um, businesses actually straight out of university, worked for Nissan New Zealand, which was a large corporation, big brand, as you'd expect. But then I did what a lot of Kiwis do and went on what we call the big overseas experience. We tend to go and and uh, travel overseas and I did that and never really went back. So, uh, you know, more than 20 years ago. So ended up working in the financial sector in London, which um, doing regulatory reporting for the Bank of England, which is, was as, wow. as boring as it sounds. Um, it gave me a different perspective, but um, and allowed me to travel. But then I ended up in the US um, in various places from, from working at Disney in, in California. But ultimately, um, spent the last 16 plus years, as you mentioned, in digital marketing and mostly in direct response marketing, um, which okay. a lot of people may not be familiar with, but really is just the ability to, to really have specific, very specific calls to action, like it might be to sign up for an e-letter or to purchase a product and be able to measure those results very specifically. Um, and, and mostly with... Uh, a company called the Agora Companies, which now have a fairly large presence in, in Waterford, actually, um, but are, in, are an American-based business with, with businesses and publishers. Uh, um, so that was that was really exciting because it, it really sort of introduced me to, to digital marketing in general, but with a very specific um, set of goals and objectives that you you could measure, which was which is what is so amazing about digital marketing. It's it's so measurable. You know, it's not like the old days where you might put some money into advertising and not really be sure what's working. So direct response I love, you know, and really I, helped I, me gain that discipline. I love that part of digital marketing because like you, I started before pre-internet, pre-social media. So yes, 
God, <laughs> it's so yeah. long ago. But yeah. I mean, yesterday I was even looking at, because we just ran an ad recently, and I was looking at how is my conversion from that ad, am I getting them onto the site? And then right. what is happening next? And then I realized, oh, I must put a video there because that will increase the conversion. And you yeah. get kind of excited when you realize you actually can hear your customers' reactions to what you're doing. Yeah, that's dead right. I mean, I think that's what gets me excited, you know, especially, you know, I, I then was around when Facebook, for instance, first launched their advertising. So I was able to sort of craft a career in a lot of ways around Facebook at one point, but then quickly realized that that Facebook was just another way of communicating and, you know, that it's still aligned with the same types of goals that you need to have. And that's what direct response, the discipline, I think, of direct response really focuses you on making sure that whatever you're doing, that there is a clear goal and a strategy for it. And it's not just something you're doing for the sake of doing it. Um, so, so that was a really important lesson for me, I think, that I've, that I've learned over recent years. But, but at the same time, it's actually been really fascinating to me to see the convergence of what we'd call brand style advertising and direct response, which at one point when I first started were almost in polar opposites, almost, I would say for direct response marketers, they, they often thought of brand marketing almost as a dirty word. It was almost like, why would you waste your time? But I think what everyone's recognizing, firstly, I think brand is recognizing with digital marketing now that you can be more measurable. And on the flip side, direct response is realizing that brand is important and credibility and reputation probably even more so is important and with that's you know facebook and social media and and the web in general everything's transparent everybody knows everything so it's more important than ever that you are conscious of that brand and that that sort of personal and brand management that, that you have around your business so that but also that's, even that's i suppose great. things like you know brand we often really strongly associate with storytelling but storytelling makes for better conversion yeah yeah, absolutely. A story is, is massive. I'm a big believer in that too. And, and again, coming from the publishing world, you know, everything um, that, that we, we did and, and do is, is really around that idea of, of building a relationship and yeah. telling stories because that's how people have relationships. They understand, you know, information and knowledge through, through stories. So, you know, that's, I think, is... And I think amazing. the other thing when I read even about you uh, already, but already knowing this about you, that this idea that yeah, it's a journey. It's We hear about customer journey. We hear about storytelling and all of this. But it's kind of one layer of the story at a time to build a relationship. It's not, yeah. you know, you have to date someone first before you ask them to marry you, you know. <laughs> exactly. We use that analogy a lot, I think, in, um, you know, certainly direct response. But in business in general, I think it's a great one because that's what we're doing. We're building trust, building relationships. And sometimes those relationships can be accelerated and they can happen more quickly. And depending on your type of business that's going to have an impact the life cycle of of that journey but other times it takes longer and certainly in our world in the publishing world that that was a great lesson for me because we, we were able to do what we would call one step or direct sale but we did a lot of our lead nurturing by building leads by getting an email address for instance and you know definitely put put to death the um, the rumor that email marketing is dead because that's still a massive um, often forgotten these days because of social media and everyone chasing that that aspect of it when really it's just another channel of of acquiring a customer or building a relationship with the customer and deepening those relationships so in all of these different touch points whether it's email or social media or the web or offline as well you know they should all be for me part of a coordinated strategy rather than be thought of so independently so i think that's that's a big thing that I like to think that I can hopefully bring to. Yeah, I love that you said that. That's a great way of yeah. articulating it. That again, back to this connected view. But if, let me just ask you this question because, you know, we have different types of people on this program. We have people who are in tech companies. We also have people who are sole traders. So there are lots of different types of people on this program. So how would they know when, like what's the trigger for them that they should say, you know what, I should really talk to Grant now. Yeah, I mean, it's a good question. And I think every business is, is so different, has different needs. And but I guess one of the things I've been so excited with, I think with marketing in general, but certainly digital marketing, is that the skills that I've certainly have learned, and I think most people learn, are so transferable, firstly. So, you know, the things that I've applied specifically to, to pub, the publishing businesses are, are lessons that can work for any business. And I think at any time, quite honestly, I kind of, I, I've lately sort of started thinking to myself, it might seem a bit lofty, but as a, as a marketing architect, I, I kind of 
yes, feel like I'm an that. architect because I, I kind of like to think that I can help with a bit of vision and a bit of the ability to figure out all these moving parts and how do they all work together towards this common vision. Um, and just like an architect, um, you know, if someone's building a brand new house, you know, you, you obviously would employ an architect right at the early stages. So, you know, if you're building a business in that early stages, that's fantastic. I feel like I can add a lot of value laying foundations, but, but equally, you know, you might be in business a year or two and really be what, what I find a lot of people struggle with is that they have been doing a, wearing a lot of hats, doing a lot of things, and they get stuck in the weeds of the day to day. And it's very difficult to step back and have a fresh perspective and look at the big picture. So, you know, I think at any stage you are in a business, it's, it's worthwhile to have a fresh pair of eyes, whether that's me or anybody that you might like to get in, who can sort of give some independent advice and, and sort of see the, the forest for the trees, so to speak. Um, so I think a lot of businesses I find become these Frankenstein's monsters. I think websites are prime examples of that, but the whole business where you do small things that get added onto the business and before you know it, you've lost sight sometimes of, of having a clear vision about what it is you're trying to do. So, you or, know, sometimes, or sometimes yeah. I think it's you discover something and it means that you reinvent or pivot and then you don't know how to align that with where you were. Yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. It's two things, you know? Yeah, exactly. You sort of find yourself sort of these legacy systems or legacy ways of doing things that maybe don't really fit anymore. So it's always a bit like a spring clean. I think it's, it's worthwhile as a business to, to always be, you know, taking a step back and look at that bigger picture. And I think, um, so, so really, yeah, I guess the short answer is at any time, you know, I really think it's worthwhile, but particularly if you are feeling a little bit overwhelmed with all of the different spinning plates that are going on and you need somebody maybe to help you just with a bit of direction and a, you know, a bit of strategy and a big picture strategy rather than getting up in the day-to-day -day weeds or the tactics that can sometimes kind of overwhelm us, you know. Well, let me that. ask you this other thing. What if someone in the program also had a process in place, but they, it wasn't quite working? Is, is it a good time to talk to you about that? Yeah, exactly. In the same way, I think it's, it's um, oftentimes what I do find is when people come to me, they usually come with a very specific idea of what their problems are but you know i'm always a big believer we only know what we know and sometimes you know, the, the identified problem might be for instance someone recently was saying oh, i can't get my facebook ads to work the cost per acquisition has really doubled as i've gone up as try to scale and so that's a problem in of itself and certainly it's something i was able to help with but at the same time i could see that that was really endemic of a bigger problem with strategy not really understanding what they were trying to achieve with, with Facebook and they thought of it as a very independent component of, of their business instead of it having it as a bigger part of the overall strategy and, and working in synergy too because more than ever you know with multi touch points that we have whether it's people searching and then seeing something on Facebook you know that, uh, that coordination becomes really important so yeah absolutely I think it's um it's always a good you know if everything's running smoothly then I'm not sure how much I value I can add although I'd like to think possibly I can get things even growing faster but but really, yeah, I think it's when people are, are finding that they're, that they're stuck and that sometimes there's some underlying problems that maybe they're not even aware of that, uh, that I'd like to be able to Fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah. Cool. Okay. That's really clear and it's really, yeah, fantastic. Thank you, Grant. So I'm going to ask you my last question, okay? And my question is three tips that you would give to an entrepreneur if you met someone today. Three tips an entrepreneur. Yeah, and look, again, um, you know, try to think of some universal ones, I guess, that, that can apply to most people and probably sort of covered the, the first one, which is really looking at that big picture. I really am a big believer in allowing people to, to avoid that sort of shiny object syndrome where, you know, someone would be suggesting there's some new tool or software, or maybe it's an ad platform like, like Facebook or Instagram comes along and absolutely not saying to discount those new, new things because they can be fantastic. But if you, Oftentimes, if you're struggling to think about how to use them or how they fit into that bigger picture, then there's probably a case to say, don't do it or not yet, you know, unless you can figure out that there is a clear strategy that will align to your goals. So again, bringing it back to the big picture, big goals that you can measure. Um, you know, for me, that is the, the first tip is to make sure that, um, you know, that, that you're always thinking about how does this really communicate what I'm trying to do as a business, you know, that you have that vision and does this help the business? Does it help the customer? If it doesn't do those things, then, then there's a chance that it's going to just distract you.
and, and waste your time and money. Cool. So that Number would be tip, tip one. Um, tip two, the sales funnel. I think, again, um, coming from this, this publishing business and direct response, it really got me looking at sales funnels or relationship funnels, I think is a better term for them, which is really just the customer journey, but kind of from a, an internal perspective. So I would literally, the tip is to, to just actually draw it out on a bit of paper or a whiteboard, however you like to work. I love whiteboarding out funnels, looking at what both the, the ideal customer journey is from their point of view, but also from your business's point of view. How can you add value to them and add value to your business? And sometimes just visually looking at what your current funnel looks like so that journey from whether it's to maybe get them to become a fan of your Facebook page or sign up for your e-letter and then how are you what, what does that relationship look like at what points you know do you have a what we would call a tripwire or a low price point to, to start a relationship or deepen the relationship do you have product points at different price points or different values that you offer just like your business does with you know different values that you offer as somebody starts realizing what what they might might need so you know, mapping out that, that funnel to look at the different cross-sells and upsells and op different offers that you might have for people can be a really good visual way of just, again, bringing you back to the big picture as well. So those two things work sort of in alignment together quite well. Um, so that will bring me to my last one, which I think uh, is a kind of a nice, simple one in lots of ways, and that is to just take action. I see yeah. a lot that we're, again... And when you are looking at the bigger picture, this sometimes becomes a bit easier because we do get caught up with a hundred things we want to do. And that sort of that paralysis by analysis or the ability to having too many choices, which happens to customers as well, by the way, but happens to all of us where we have a difficulty in just acting. And what we always sort of worked on, especially at the Agora companies that it, you know, it was a big mantra of ours was the sort of idea of the ready, fire, aim model. Um, where really what that means is that you just, it's a bit like a minimal viable product where, you know, you're not trying to be perfect from the outset. You just do something, especially if you can get it to market, whether it's an ad that you want to run and then let the market tell you what's yeah, working you know. or not. Yeah. Because we, we too often presuppose what might happen or what we want to do is perfect. And it might be, for instance, launching a new website for a membership site and thinking about all the bells and whistles that you want which just you're waiting to get it perfect, but better done than perfect, I think is Facebook's motto. And in a similar way, it's launch and then let, the, let your members or would-be members tell you what they want, either by them actually telling you or by their actions. If you find that they're not actually using a section of your website, which you can use through analytics or Hotjar or similar types of software, um, you know, analyze what people are actually using and then you can reiterate and improve your products from there so that can that can apply with your launching ads building a website or any number of things in between those so really just to take action not to overthink things just to start making improvements bit by bit rather than try to be perfect from the outset yeah i think that's really important because too often when when entrepreneurs take action they think they've only got one shot they mm -hmm. have so many shots <laughs> yeah like you mentioned pivoting and and you know we, we we're always constantly improving and look to be honest Customers love that too. You know, if you start off with your, I mean, software is a perfect example of that version 1.0. It's, you know, you, you get to reiterate and improve. So your customers feel that they're getting extra value because suddenly I can release a new feature or release something new as, as part of the offering. And that becomes, you know, great value add to anybody. So, you know, leave some space for that rather than trying to, to come out with the perfect model. You know, I think most businesses that are successful, the iPhone, prime example, you know, they're, you know, still it's fundamentally the same example. product. You know, look at how, how much better they are now through yeah. all of the improvements that they've learned from what their customers wanted, but also what they knew that they could provide. So yeah, leave some sp scope for, for product development and, and, you know, give yourself a break. You know, you, you're not going to be perfect. None of us are. We just try to do the best we can each day and make, you know, steps by step, smaller incremental things that you can do rather than trying to climb the mountain from day one. Yeah, because before you know it, you're on the mountain, you know? That's it. Yeah, yeah. 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 Cool. Really good advice. Thank you so much. I'm going to add one because I'm looking behind you, which is do what you love. That's number <laughs> four. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that helps. Yeah, I think it. No, look, it is. And, you know, sometimes that can be a little bit um, challenging too, because, you know, but as small entrepreneurs, if we find something we love, obviously it, it can, it can help keep us, you know, driving along, but, but balance is important too. And realizing that it isn't, you know, the end of the world either. Like we say, if you launch something and, it, and it's not perfect, you know, even though you love it and you're passionate about it, you have to be able to say, you know what, this is 
probably you're overthinking way more than the other person because you love it so much that, you know, that you want it to be perfect. But, um, but I, you know, I think if you can give yourself a break to realize that, uh, you know, you can still love something and, and still doesn't, it doesn't have to be 100% perfect every time. But yeah, absolutely. If you can find those things you love and get inspired by them, then, uh, you know, that, that's amazing. I love working with people who, who have that inspiration. And thankfully, there, there are more and more of them out there because the industry has now allowed us to, to do that, to, to take an idea and to, and to run with it and get it to market. Fantastic. Thank yeah. you so much for your time. Thank you. Yeah, Let me just say to everyone, I really urge you to spend some time with Grant. Use one of your months or many of your months with the Get Strategic Ad and Expert program and work with Grant. He's going to help you with the architecture of your business, of your marketing in your business and how it all connects. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Grant. No problem. Yeah, look forward to connecting with some of you. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Cool. Take care. Bye-bye. You're unstoppable.